In 2012, the Status of Forces Agreement was signed between Niger and the United States, allowing the U.S. to station 1,000 military personnel in Niger and operate a military base. It also made Niger a key ally of the United States. The U.S. probably thought this agreement would last for a very long time, but the coup occurred in July 2023, which changed everything. Initially, it seemed like only France was affected as its military forces were sent packing and diplomatic relations between Niger and France deteriorated completely. However, the relationship between the U.S. and Niger is now in the spotlight as the military junta of Niger officially ended the status of forces agreement. This means that the U.S. military forces are no longer welcome and are expected to leave. The only thing is that unlike when the French military was told to withdraw from Niger, the military government of Niger did not state in certain terms that the U.S. military should leave the country. It only said that it had ended the defense agreement which allowed the U.S. military forces to be stationed in the country. This loophole has given the U.S. hope that it could still find a way to remain in the country. Some days after, the military government of Niger made the announcement, Celeste Wallander, Assistant Secretary of Defense for International Security Affairs, told the House Armed Services Committee that so far, Niger's ruling military council, known as the CNSP, has not formally asked the U.S. military to leave. This is why officials from the U.S. military are currently exploring several options that will allow the U.S. military to remain in the country, meaning that they are having conversations with the military government of Niger. As we asked in our previous video, will the military government of Niger reconsider its decision after talks with the U.S. official? Well, right now nobody knows what is going on behind the scenes, and it's not exactly clear what the military junta would do. However, something happened recently that may just throw some light on what the military junta of Niger plans to do. So, what event occurred? Now, recall that one of the reasons why Niger decided to end military cooperation with the U.S is because of the U.S. condescending attitude towards Niger. During the series of meetings that took place between Niger and officials from the U.S. military, the U.S. made it known to Niger that going forward, if there is going to be any cooperation between both countries, Niger will have to end any diplomatic relations it has with Russia and Iran. Isn't it condescending of them to come to a sovereign country and dictate who that country should partner with? It certainly is and the Niger spokesman made this known to the U.S. military in clear words. He also made them understand that Russia and Iran have been partners with Niger for decades, and the U.S. doesn't have any right to dictate what Niger should do. To further reinforce the point that Niger can partner with Russia if it wants to, the military junta of Niger called President Putin to express solidarity with Russia following terrorist attacks at Crocus City Hall, which killed 139 people. And, after expressing solidarity, both leaders went on to discuss military cooperation to combat terrorism in the Sahel and other mutually beneficial cooperations. This call between President Putin and General Tiani happened in March, and on Wednesday, 10th of April, 2024, the result of that discussion actualized. Broadcasted on Niger State Television, the footage of Russian military trainers arriving in the country can be seen. These trainers arrived in the country aboard a plane equipped with military supplies to boost Niger's air defenses. Two Russian trainers were filmed in front of the plane wearing military uniforms, caps, and face coverings. We are here to train the Nigerian army to use the military equipment that is here, one of the Russian trainers said in French. We are here to develop military cooperation between Russia and Niger, he added. The broadcast also revealed that Russia also has plans to install an anti-aircraft system. The arrival of Russian forces makes it complicated for the U.S. forces, as well as its diplomatic and civilian personnel, to remain in the country and throws into doubt the future of joint Niger-U.S. counterinsurgency operations. This is because the United States military would certainly not want to stay where the military of its greatest rival, Russia, is present. Now, recall that the military junta of Niger ended the defense agreement with the U.S., but he did not state in exact terms that the U.S. military should leave. At the same time, the junta has accepted Russian trainers for his country's army, 
an action that goes against the demands of the U.S. So what does this mean? What exactly is the military junta of Niger doing? Well, according to John Lechner, Africa analyst and author on the Wagner Group, the arrival of a Russian air defense system can be viewed as part of the junta's effort to reclaim sovereignty, this time over its airspace, and force the U.S. and Russia to cooperate with each other in Niger. However, he added that such cooperation is unlikely. In our opinion, the military junta of Niger is keeping its options open. Niger alone does not have the resources to deal with the insecurity and terrorism which has plagued the country for years. The junta recognizes this and understands that the country needs mutually beneficial allies which would help to fight the terrorism. France had the resources, but didn't do anything tangible, that's why it was kicked out. The United States also has the resources, but the agreement signed between Niger and the U.S. benefited the U.S. more than Niger. According to the agreement, Niger was forced to pay bills related to taxes on the U.S. military. Niger was ignorant of the activities conducted by the U.S. military in the country, and the U.S. military was under no obligation to respond to any request for help against militants. This meant that if Niger called for help in its fight against the terrorists, the U.S. had every right to refuse to help. So, if they are not obligated to help, what good are they? This is why the junta had to cancel the agreement. But remember, he didn't exactly tell them to leave. Russia, on the other hand, has the resources and is willing to help Niger fight its war against the terrorists. So by accepting Russian trainers into Niger, the military junta believes two things will happen. By accepting Russian trainers and not telling the U.S. to leave, the junta is sending a message to the United States that they are welcome to remain in the country as long as they are ready to accept the fact that Russia will also be in Niger. And if the U.S. accepts, both countries will have to sign a new agreement which would be beneficial to both Niger and the United States. However, as John Lechner said, it's unlikely that the U.S. would agree to cooperate with Russia, given that it regards Russia as its greatest enemy and plans to reduce Russian influence in Africa. So, if the U.S. refuses to agree with the idea of cooperating with Russia and Niger, it would have no option but to withdraw completely from Niger. In essence, the military junta is trying to kill two birds with one stone. If the U.S. agrees to cooperate with Russia working in Niger, the junta gains an ally without conforming to the dictates of the U.S. If the U.S. refuses, then it will have no option but to leave, which also works fine for the military government of Niger. If you think about it, it's quite a brilliant move. Right now, the ball is in the court of the United States. What will they do? Well, only time will tell, but no doubt it's going to be a tough decision because withdrawing from Niger means that the U.S. would no longer have its eyes and ears in the Sahel. It would also mean a loss to the millions of dollars invested in the Agadez military base, which served as the central base of operation of all the U.S. military activities in the Sahel. As we said, only time will tell what the next move will be. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.